Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, I acquired both of these Optiplexes for free. They both have i5s. One had four gigs of RAM, one had six gigs of RAM. You can find these on your local Craigslist anywhere from $50 to $150. And I love these Optiplexes. I've actually been using an Optiplex 990 with an i7 for two years straight. I threw a 270X in it, stock power supply, never had a problem. So the first unit I have here is the Optiplex 3020 with an i5-4590. It does turbo up to 3.7 gigahertz, but the stock clock is set at 3.3. This is a nice machine. I really wanted to use this for my emulation build, but it turns out that the PCIe X16 slot is at the bottom. It's really close to the power supply and the video card that I wanted to use will not fit in here. So this one's out of the question because my GPU will not fit, but it did come with one stick, four gigabyte, 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. I'm gonna be putting that in the other Optiplex, swapping out one of the two gig sticks in there. So I ended up using the 3010. This is the Optiplex 3010. It does have an i5, but it's an older i5. It's a third generation Ivy Bridge i5, 3450 at 3.1 gigahertz. Now I know this is an old CPU. A lot of people have already upgraded, but for me, I got these for free and it's a very capable CPU still to this day. This i5 will play games at high settings with the right graphics card and you'll get 60 FPS at 1080p, no problem. So here's the internals. As you can see, the PCIe X16 is a little higher than the other Optiplex, so I have to use this one. I really wanted to use that other one because it does have a better CPU, but I'm not gonna notice much of a difference at all between the two. For the GPU, like I mentioned, it's a 1050 Ti. This is the MSI Low Profile GTX 1050 Ti 4 gigabyte model. Now the manufacturer does recommend at least a 300 watt power supply. And unfortunately, these things came with a low power supply. This is a 240 watt power supply. But like I mentioned at the beginning, I've been using an Optiplex 990 for over two years with an R9 270X 2 gigabyte graphics card and a stock power supply. I have never had any trouble with it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and see if this will work. The GPU will pull 75 watts, and the CPU's TPD is rated at 77 watts. So that does leave me with a little bit extra on that power supply, but a lot of other stuff's going on too. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to get away with this. It could last a week, it could last three years. So the main reason I wanted to do this was to show you guys that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars just to emulate games. This right here is going to run Dolphin, PS2, 3DS, Dreamcast, PSP. It'll even do GTA 5 high settings at 60 FPS. Now the main thing with picking one of these up cheap is patience. Check your local Craigslist, your Let It Go, your Offer Up, and even your local college auctions. I've seen these for as low as $50. And even if you have to spend $100 on one of these with a 500 gigabyte drive, no graphics card, and 4 gigabytes of RAM, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. Now it's time to see what this thing can do. You can always install Linux on it, but it had Windows 7 pre-installed and I used the loophole with the Windows accessibility to upgrade to Windows 10. I'm gonna be running LaunchBox. I'm gonna test PS2, Dolphin, PSP, and 3DS. I just wanna show you guys how this performs in emulation. Now I do plan on doing another video on straight PC games. I did test GTA 5, high settings. I get over 60 FPS. So let's head over to Windows 10 and check this thing out. So here we are, we have the Intel Core i5-3450 at 3.1 gigahertz. It does turbo up to 3.3. As for RAM, I'm using eight gigabytes of DDR3-1600 megahertz. It's not matched, they're two different brands, but it performs just fine. And as for the GPU, 1050 Ti, four gigabyte, low profile. I was gonna run 3D Mark on it, but there's no point. We're using this for emulation, so I ran a Geekbench. Single core, 3,522, multi-core, 10,240. I can say that my iPhone 8 Plus does score higher than this in Geekbench, but it's a whole different animal. That's ARM versus x86. I also ran in a 2.2 benchmark because on this channel, I do a lot of Android boxes and Android devices, and I always run it in 2.2. For this, we scored a 440,659, and most of that came from our GPU, the 1050. For my emulation front end, I'm using LaunchBox. Well, this is Big Box, the premium version. It's so easy to set up, and it just works very well. Thank you. 
So this is something I just whipped up real quick. I have PS2, PSP, N64. Now N64 is gonna run perfectly on this machine. Nintendo GameCube and Dreamcast. Dreamcast and N64 are gonna work fine, so I'm not even gonna test them here. I'm mainly worried about PS2, PSP, and Nintendo GameCube. I also wanna test out some 3DS. I haven't set it up in LaunchBox, but I will do a test at the end. So we'll just go into Nintendo GameCube real quick. And I'm gonna test out Soul Calibur 2. That's my go-to test. If Soul Calibur 2 runs at 60 FPS, pretty much anything else is gonna work fine as long as it's compatible with the Dolphin emulator. The FPS is listed in the top left-hand corner along with the GPU temperature, the GPU percentage, the CPU percentage, the RAM, and at the bottom we have the FPS. So I'm using the DX11 plugin for Dolphin, and it works fine. Now, I knew this was gonna run it. That i5 paired with the 1050 Ti is perfect for things like this. Just give it a little more gameplay so you can see. 60 FPS, we're pretty much pegged at 60. It does drop down every once in a while, but if you're not FPS watching, you'll never notice it. I'm going to exit this game. It'll bring us right back in the big box. I'll back out of here, and then we'll test PS2. I'll go with Tekken 5 on PS2. That's kind of my go-to test for the PlayStation 2 emulator. I am using PC SX2 for the PS2 emulator, but it's a little weird because the MSI overlay will not work on the DX9 plugin that I'm using for the PC SX2. So I can't get the FPS to show up in the top left-hand corner. But if you look at this, it is full speed. I'm sure I could even up the resolution a little bit here for this game. It is set at factory settings with the DX9 plugin. I want to say it's something like 1024 by 1024, but you could go up. I'll just do one more round here. Get ready for the next battle. Round one. Fight. There are a few games that don't work well with this PS2 emulator, like my personal favorite Ratchet and Clank games. They are playable, but there's a lot of graphical glitches going on, so there's not a lot I want to play on PS2, except for a few fighting games like Tekken 5. You win. Round two. Fight. I'll exit the PS2 emulator. We'll go back and try PSP. I'm going to be using the PPSSPP emulator. We're going to be testing God of War Chains of Olympus. I do have the PPSSPP resolution set at 4X, so it's four times the resolution of the original PSP screen. We'll load up this save here. FPS is listed in the top right hand corner. Now I wanted to try the Vulcan plugin, but I have to use the DX11 plugin for this game at least. Vulcan does work in certain games. I just can't get it to work correctly in God of War.
So all of those work great. Let's test out 3DS. This whole time I've actually been using a Bluetooth Xbox One controller with a little $4 dongle off of Amazon. It works fine. You just plug it in, sync up, and you got a wireless controller. So this is Citra, a working 3DS emulator. There are a lot of games that work and a lot of games that don't work. I'm gonna be testing Yoshi's Island or new Yoshi's Island. I do have to turn the sound off, but the sound works pretty well. I'll leave it on for just a second, but I have to turn it off due to copywritten music. As you can see, the FPS is listed in the top left hand corner and we're at a steady 60. I did test a few other games like Pokemon X and Y. It does work good, but every once in a while you'll notice a bad stutter. This emulator has come a long way though. There are a lot of games that work really well. And this is definitely one of them. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. As you can see, this PC works really good for emulation. I'm gonna be making another video this week just testing PC games, but I wanted to get this out of the way first. You don't need to spend a fortune to get some good emulation going. I have $160 into this just because of the GPU. If you were to buy one for 50 and then buy a nice GPU like a 1050, or even the 1030 should work in Dolphin and PS2 you won't have much money into a nice emulation PC. And it's gonna work for a long time coming. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I got a lot of great stuff coming up in 2018. Like always, thanks for watching.